as I look more and more into Fedora, I discover a never-ending stream of really neat additions added to the distro over the years. One of those additions is being considered for removal before I'd ever really heard of it. That being Delta RPMs. This was proposed by the Fedora project leader, Matthew Miller. Proposal, drop Delta RPMs for real this time. The for real this time is very important. This is not the first time this has been discussed. All the way back in 2017, this issue was made. Older DRPMs, Delta RPMs, not synced. As noted in this post, it seems we are only syncing out the DRPMs made in that specific compose, which keep a ideally configurable amount of older ones around. I think for Rawhide, we were keeping two weeks, we could start with that. As it is now, unless someone updates on the day an update is pushed, they won't get the advantage of a DRPM. Basically, as the new DRPMs were coming out, they were ditching the old ones so you couldn't actually use them. And someone mentioned, hey, uh, I half wonder if we should just stop generating DRPMs entirely. And then following this in 2021, this was made. Delta RPM usefulness. Hi all. I think Delta RPM is not really useful anymore and goes over all the reasons why they simply don't really matter. This discussion didn't really go anywhere and sort of just hit a dead end and just ended. That's not really that uncommon with a lot of projects, but now it's being considered again. But hold up a second. What is a Delta RPM? Why would anybody care about them? And why did they exist in the first place? Okay, hopefully we all know what an RPM is in the context of Fedora. RPM is the packaging format used by the DNF package manager and by extension used by Yum. This is the packaging format used on Fedora Linux and various other distros out there, but Fedora Linux is the only thing we care about today. Now a Delta RPM, sometimes just called a DRPM, basically builds off of that concept with one really major difference. So, when you update a regular RPM, like updating any regular package on pretty much any other distro, whether that's Ubuntu, Arch Linux, Void Linux, anything else out there, the old package and all of its contents are going to be deleted and replaced with the new package and all of its contents. This is the easiest way to handle an update. No fancy computation, just get rid of the old and bring in the new. This is not the way a Delta RPM works. Instead, what it does is downloads the difference between the current version and the new version. And then you take the current RPM and the update difference and bring them together, reconstructing the full updated RPM locally on your system. Now, as for the name Delta, the reason for this is difference is represented in mathematics as the Greek symbol Delta. This does have some drawbacks, but it also has some pretty major benefits. Let's say we have an application that is 200 megs in size, and it has an update. Now with a regular RPM, you can't do anything besides downloading the entire updated application, downloading the entire 200 megs. But with a Delta RPM, you only need to download what has changed. This might be like 3 or 4 megabytes. This can be incredibly useful for those that have a slower internet connection. However, there is a reason why you don't see every distro out there doing this. Nothing in the world is free. So by having to reconstruct that package locally on your system, this has a much greater cost on your CPU and your IO. In many cases, it might not actually work out to be quicker. Now, even though we're talking about Fedora, Delta RPMs didn't actually start there. They actually started over on the SUSE side in 2005 and then made their way over to Fedora in 2009. This was a time, especially the 2005 date, when even in really developed countries like the US, Germany, UK, Australia, especially Australia, it wasn't uncommon to have absolutely awful network speeds. In 2005, I think I had a speed of 
maybe one down, possibly, maybe a little bit less. At that time, you could legitimately save yourself a lot of time sacrificing a little bit of CPU time to not have to download a couple hundred megabytes on a one down connection. But over the years, procedures started to slip. The issue pointed out in 2017 is they weren't actually keeping the Delta RPMs around long enough so people could actually download them. Now, the difference between having a full RPM and a Delta RPM is with a full RPM, you can wait 6 months, skip 20 updates, and update no issue whatsoever. With a Delta RPM, because you're applying the update and trying to reconstruct the package, you need to download each of those individual updates. And if those individual updates are no longer in the repo, you can't build the fully updated RPM. And then in the 2021 post, another issue was pointed out. There are very few DRPM files in the repository. See, for example, now at this point, all of this has already been deleted, but the problem is still happening today. This is every single DRPM currently available. It looks like a lot of packages, but this isn't everything. This is not everything that should have a DRPM if DRPM is covering the entire distro. So this leads to a bit of a problem. This leads to, um, now the problem getting worse. This is an example from the 2021 post. This person installed four packages, upgraded 161 and removed three. The total download size was 751. There were three DRPMs out of all of these, three DRPMs, the Delta RPMs reduced the download size from 750.9 megabytes to 747.5, 0.4% saved. And this seems to be the case for most of the people, somewhere between 0 and 2-ish percent. Sometimes I have seen up to about 5%, but that's pretty much as far as it goes. And this is a more recent example. The last updates just now on three different machines gave me, this is a couple of days ago, Delta RPMs reduced 284.9 megabytes of updates to 281, 1.4% saved, 14.3 megabytes of updates to 3.3, 76.9% saved. That does sound like a lot, but keep in mind downloading an extra 10 megabytes would maybe take, I don't know, a couple of seconds more. And then the third had no Delta RPMs whatsoever. This and this are very typical results. Now, here's the fun thing about missing Delta RPM updates. So if things are being deleted before you can download the entire chain, you can't use the Delta RPMs. So you're just gonna download the regular RPM anyway. So even if there was a Delta RPM for one of the things you're gonna update, it's very likely that you weren't gonna use it anyway. This also happens if the Delta RPM fails constructing the full RPM. It would just go and download the regular RPM and be good to go. At this point, the question then becomes, what do you do? Do you go all back in on Delta RPMs and make them legitimately useful, or do you ditch them completely and then focus on other things instead? Well, Matthew didn't even consider the first thing, so second option it is then. I was asked to weigh in on this right here as a priority. Last time we talked about this, we didn't really get anywhere. That was this one here. And that ticket hasn't moved because fixing it isn't trivial. What we're doing now, as has been the case for several years already noted in the previous discussion, has very little end user value. Providing Delta RPMs that stick around for a short amount of time for a tiny amount of applications that basically don't do anything besides slowing down your system. Also, as noted in that thread as in the ticket, that's unfortunate because it did bring some real benefits and could possibly do even more. But I think it's time to move on. We have OS3 and various container Delta approaches. We should strive on those and give Delta RPMs a sad, fond farewell. But even though Matthew is the project leader, he realizes that getting rid of them at this like very second might be a bit of a problem. 
So my normal response would be, well, I missed the Fedora 38 deadline by a wide margin, so Fedora 39 plus? Uh, Fedora 38, I believe, is supposed to come out in April. The beta should be in a couple of days. Correct me if I'm wrong. But I think we could stop producing Delta RPMs for current releases without really affecting those releases. There would just not be more created, which as previously explored, would not really have a strong effect. So I wouldn't leave the other options out of the question. So, hey, infrastructure people, what do you think? How easy is it to shut this off? If shut off, can it be turned back on again in case of regrets? Uh, once shut off, is decommissioning infrastructure around a project or just more shutting it off? What risks are there? And how much would be saved in compute resources, storage, delays, ongoing maintenance work, and other? And Kevin Fenzi of the Fedora infrastructure team chimes in to answer these concerns. And uh, it turns out they'd already half decommissioned it anyway. Just FYI, we do not produce DRPMs for Rawhide slash Branch at all since 2017-ish. So, um, that's a big part of the reason why it was really useless. So, shutting it off is just one line in a config, and then turning it back on is just turning false into true. Uh, as far as I can think, nothing else needs to be done. They will just disappear. What risks are there? None. Uh, what would this save? Some, but not a lot, as we only dealt against the previous update composers, and thus don't do too many. Storage. Hundreds of megabytes. Lots of storage. Uh, anything else? Nothing comes to mind. So it seems like getting rid of this is a pretty seamless thing. Maybe it would take, like, an hour, possibly, and then turn it back on. Possibly about the same. But even though, as it stands, it's not really that useful, not everyone is in favour of the decommissioning. This person said, dislike minus one, because everyone else was saying, like plus one, which is not really a coherent argument, but hey, thought I'd throw it in there. There is a much better argument from Neil Gomba, saying our tooling has been broken for a long time and contributions to that tooling is just not going to happen since nobody can run this stuff outside of Fedora infrastructure. It's a sad state of affairs indeed. Please don't try to equate those things to Delta RPMs, unless you're trying to equate their general uselessness, OS tree and container Delta stuff is not generally useful or applicable for Fedora users, and they won't be for a very long time. And they might never be useful because OS tree's approach requires us to use OS tree remote, which we're killing for OCI remotes, and there's no standard for container Delta since the baseline OCI format isn't amenable to Delta fetching. But what do you think? Do you even use Delta RPMs? Do you even know if you have them enabled in your DNF config? It's very possible you don't. It's very possible you've had them existing all this time and never even remotely touched them. But even if they are enabled, it's possible you've never seen one. So let me know down below. And if you don't happen to use Fedora, um, uh, let me know if Delta packages on another distro would be cool. I would love to know. So if you like this video, remember to go and like the video. And if you really like the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, go check out my Patreon, subscribe, Stanley Berape, linked down below. That's going to be it for me and I'm out.